Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here by request today to get the 240 uh, Surveyor Legend. This is a, uh, it's under 5,200 pounds, Murphy bed bunkhouse. We're up here at our Grand Rapids, Michigan location, but we have these things at several places across the country. As always, check the link in the video description. You can see where we have one parked, what, uh, you know, we're asking for it. You can always check on the specific equipment on that camper. Like today, we've added the solar package, uh, a TV, and I th something else, I can't remember exactly what, but... <laughs> It all blends together when you're doing a bunch of videos all at one time. So one, a couple cool things on this one. It's not an over the top, extra heavy, extra expensive, lighter weight camper. It comes in under 5,200 pounds. I think it's about 5,150 almost on the nose. Dry weight, obviously you wanna make sure you leave room for your loaded weight, but this fits well within the realm of most uh, tow package half tons or a bigger class tow package SUV. It has a 60 by 80 True Queen Murphy bed, which is hard to find. Freedom Express does that, Rockwood does it on occasion, but not everybody does that. There's certainly some other examples out there. It is a little bit of a bendy bed, which isn't always my preference, but that does mean that it's very easy to add a foam topper to this thing. And you do maintain the full front pass-through compartment that a, uh, a full flip up down Murphy bed otherwise would lack because the bed ends up occupying the front storage compartment when it nose dives in there. It's a cargo bunkhouse and I really like how they accomplish that. Actually, th this thing is, it's, it's cute, it's homey, it's kind of fun, I like it. Let me know what you think as we go. Tell me what uh, you like and what you would change if given the opportunity. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because this is just the start of what we have. If you weren't aware, by the way, it's a quick side note. Surveyor is kind of the parent company to RPOD. So Surveyor uh, sprung the birth of RPOD, which sprung the birth of No Boundaries, which kind of sprung the birth of Ibex. So these things are all related. And these are things that we're gonna be able to bring to you this year. I just punched, uh, I'm sitting next to another trailer. The, the propane tanks. Uh, all right, so with our quick little floor plan and a flash there, you got kind of the general gist of it. Let's get a little bit more specific now. There is something on this that I didn't realize until I actually got in the shower, and that is that this camper has a little bit taller ceiling. Um, I think it's like, it's about 6'8", six, 6'9", six, something like that. Uh, it, it was actually a very nice surprise because when I stepped into something smaller and lighter, I expected to have my head in the skylight in the shower and... That wasn't the case here. Now, taking a look over here, um, very, very similar floor plan to say a, uh, a Rockwood 2509, uh, a, a Coachman 238. I'll probably mention those numbers a few times. If they don't mean anything to you, check the video description. I'll leave you links to those videos specifically as well. They have U dinettes. This is a two bench dinette setup. Some people prefer one over the other. What I do like about this is the way they have their storage system set up on that. We'll come back to that in just a moment. First of all, though, you've got breeze windows all the way around, and they opted for a little bit bigger window package here, which does mean they sacrificed overhead storage like you might see in some other brands, but that's also a little bit lighter, a little bit less expensive, and it also looks and feels a little bit bigger and more open. And some people like one way, some people like the other. Oh, it just occurred to me. Instead of the disco blue light here, they've got that nice amber lighting. That is far easier on your eyes in the evening hours and uh it, it, it's just i don't know that's my personal preference it also there's some people say uh the blue lighting can screw up your circadian rhythms your sleeping patterns as it were now if we take a squat over here in the dinette maybe not the most flowery phrase i've uttered yet today but also not the worst <laughs> my wife can confirm that for you you see where they they, they put the entertainment center over here um, now the TV, I've got it kind of partially angled so that you get the idea, but TV can pivot. So if you want to watch TV over here from the dinette, like maybe you got the kids over here and you're watching DuckTales, woo! Anybody else? That's got to be stuck in your head now. I never know what the rest of the other words are. I'm always like, DuckTales, woo! <laughs> Just me. And I tell you, I am normally not a fan of what I call bendy beds. But this setup works for me. This setup surprisingly works for me. First of all, it's a 60 by 80 queen sized mattress. Now you do bend the mattress. Uh, there is a fold point in the mattress. So kind of keep that in mind. It's not a one piece up down mattress like a, like, like a Rockwood or Flagstaff style Murphy bed or say like a, a lot of the Wildwoods. But you know, there's different benefits. This does allow for a full unob uh, unobstructed front pass through compartment 
One of the things here they did that I, I thought was also really nice is they did give us a privacy curtain. Um, it's a little cold right now, which uh, it, it kind of kept that cloth material bunched up a little bit. So I had trouble getting it totally closed at the top. But again, I think that's more of a symptom of the weather. Their bedroom storage solution up here, though, it, it does not suck. So first of all, up here in the like headboard area, I love those corner pockets, those side pockets. And if you're noticing, they gave you a place to put a drink there when you're laying down at night, but they do the very same thing over here during the day when you sit down. So it's just one less opportunity for you or for a kid to, to bop around or shake the camper and drop and spill stuff. Sometimes, man, it's the little stuff that gets me going. But again, where this design really excels is it allows for maximized storage inside and outside. Now, I think this helps offset the uh, the lack of storage, uh, say, above the, uh, the dinette in the slide. I, I'm never a fan of sacrificing storage, but if they can give it to me somewhere else, I don't necessarily dislike it. Uh, like, I mean, this this isn't bad, my, my personal opinion. Notice the household and USB outlets on both sides of the bed, by the way. And remember how I said the dinette had a really cool kind of storage solution. You do need to uh, pull the cushions up out of the way to make it a little uh, easier, but kind of like uh, a lift up bed storage. They just have gas struts that uh, lift up that, you know, seat decking right there. And it makes it, frankly i think fairly easy to get in there now if someone's sitting at the dinette yes you do have to be like all right mom and dad need to get in there you guys gals you got to get up but i mean <laughs> it works but there's something especially about like sitting right here on the front murphy sofa like it has a warm welcoming kind of homey sort of feeling in here to me i i don't know i'm i'm not uh home decor specialist or anything and there is one thing about this rv that i really went huh and i will always make sure i point out not just the cool storage stuff but also the the, the things that make you go hmm this rv does not have centralized air conditioning so it is uh theoretically it's it's more efficient to have non-centralized air conditioning because the, the sun that is beating down on the uh, the roof isn't warming up all the AC ducting. At the same time, it does mean that you have reduced distribution. Now, this is a smaller RV. It is primarily a one-room RV. Uh, the bathroom might get a little warm as a result. Overall, though, it should generally be able to keep up because it's the same size air conditioner. It just doesn't have ducting running through the roof. Once again, you see that TV that can be pivoted around for some easy viewing. Uh, no window in the entry door, not my favorite thing, but windows on both sides, so I can still kind of see around. Not, I guess not the end of the world sort of situation there. And it, it took me uh, a minute to find the control panel, but I actually like, they put it up here out of the way. Um, whereas uh, the other people that I've seen who build a floor plan like this, they'll put the control panel right down here where the kids can get to it. And I can... <laughs> So, uh, from personal experience, I burned up my grandfather's water heater because we were boondock dry camping and he did not have water going through the water heater and I, and I screwed it up. Now, in case you're curious, again, we added the uh, solar package to this one. Handy little battery tender. It's only a 10 amp charger. It's not a big, massive package. And you're this thing is losing its mind. It's blinking. It's blinking. They're like, what is going on with this thing? And there's nothing wrong with it. We just don't have a battery on the tongue of the camper right now. So the controller's going, whoa, uh... I'm getting sunshine. I don't have a battery to direct this stuff to. That's all that's happening. No big deal. Now, something else I thought was really interesting here. Um, some of the kitchen storage solutions. So uh, they, they made sure that you could get to all of the space available under the countertop. Plus one there for sure. These are all sealed edge press membrane countertops, whether it's the dining table, the bedside stands or sofa side stands as they were over here in the kitchen. We've got ourselves that farm sink. But look at the sink covers. Uh, it's the first time I've ever seen a manufacturer do a farm sink with asymmetrical sink covers. Now, it doesn't bother me. Is there someone who's used a camper like this? Is there a benefit to that that I don't understand? Or can you guys think of something that I don't quite understand? Like, what, what's the significant benefit there? Anyway, 
Ooh, we got the Barley Poppinator uh, Surveyor Series over there for the uh, bottles of barley water that don't twist open. A couple handy drawers here. And uh, as we uh, work our way past, again, it's these little things. It's the little things. Like, the, the little knife holder is cool. And I went, wait a minute. And it's just, you know what? Like, you go to any insurance company, you go to a, a, a fair and you get these little plastic cups, right? You know, you go to Dickie's Barbecue and you get the little yellow plastic cup. It slots right in there. And now that can be a utensil holder. And then you can just take it outside and use it with the camp kitchen. I looked at that. I'm like, that is simple. It is easy. It is lightweight. It is inexpensive. And it is freaking brilliant, Batman. I really like stuff. I hope I see more of that around. This is a 12-volt a uh, DC compressor fridge, 10.3 cubic foot variety, I believe, which will be uh, totally travel safe. Cool very, very quickly, by the way. About four times faster than a, a standard absorption fridge. Over here to the bunk space. This is a cargo bunk model. You see the door off the back. We'll get a better look at that in cargo function mode in uh, a few minutes here from both directions, actually. But uh, right now we're in double over double bunk mode. I was a little surprised... Uh, given all the other really smart features, that that window right there didn't open for airflow. Just, I guess it is what it is. But if you look around the corner, this is something I got to get better about doing, showing around the bunks. And thank you for those suggestions, by the way. Your suggestions drive our channel. Upper and lower bunks both have their own uh, light. They have their own set of USB plugs. And they have their own curtains. So that, uh, you know, the kids in the lower bed, the kids in the upper bed, they're not fighting one another or the kids in the, the bottom bed trying to pull the curtain shut aren't ripping the track out of the roof as it were now uh over here again this is something that really surprised me i didn't realize this rv had a little bit taller ceiling it was just enough that i could stand uh in the shower this thing here without my head in the bubble i i was i was really taken aback by that pleasantly so and it is a little bit of a surveyor shub not quite a shower not quite a tub. It's just deep enough if you had to bathe a baby, you could. Porcelain foot flush stool with, I think, acceptable leg room, elbow room, shoulder room around it. Not the biggest bathroom I've ever been in, but hey, also not the worst. And uh, around the corner over here, I'm at kind of a funny angle for it, but this is a mirrored medicine cabinet. You know, it's just a simple little drawstring. Helps keep it from banging open going down the road. What do we think? because I don't have experience with them. What do you think about these pegs here in the bathroom to hang stuff as opposed to uh, like drunken octopus coat hangers or say like a, a towel rod? Like what, what is your preference in terms of bathroom hardware? Now for traveling function, this one nails it. I, I think really, really well. It is definitely a sideways travel trailer two-step getting between this uh, peninsula style kitchen counter and the dining table, but you can do the travel trailer two-step and you can slide to the left and get yourself through here. Or you can slide to the right, depending on the orientation of your body uh, as you're doing the sliding. Now, you saw the refrigerator to our left. There is a good look at that cargo bunk function that we talked about earlier. One of the cool things about this, because it, it just slides straight through and it goes all the way up here to the kitchen countertop, uh, you could throw like a, a decent-sized kayak or something in there. Uh, the other thing I thought was kind of cool about that is there's no, like, mechanical locks or straps or flaps or anything. It's just a, uh, like a strut, like a, almost like a awning strut that just kind of holds that open. Now, what's also nice here, you can easily, uh, open the bathroom. You can get to all that storage. There's frankly not a whole lot in this that isn't travel customable. But I'm, wait a minute. I want, can we get to the bed with the slide close? Let's find out. Oh, it is close. It is so close. But you just can't quite get the uh, the sofa jackknife down to put the bed in the down position. So um, maybe not good for a overnight stop unless you open the slide. But, to, you know, to get in, if we got a quick potty stop, uh, have you ever noticed, like, is it just me? Five seconds after you pass the last exit, mom, dad, I got a potty starts chirping out of the back seat. Is, is it genetic? Like, what causes this? So outside here, 
Uh, let's talk the nose first and foremost. This is the Surveyor Legend series. These are the smaller, little bit lighter brothers of the family, and uh, they do not have nose caps. They're a little bit more weight sensitive. Nose caps look really cool. They don't necessarily add anything to the RV unless they like wrap around the, uh, you know, the, the sidewalls or something. Um, but uh, they do add weight and they do add cost. And those are things that you're not going to find added to this camper right here. You may notice they also opt for the sliding max airflow windows, which is going to be a little bit more spring and fall, potentially boondock friendly. They also did a good job of, I think, giving us about the biggest awning they could on this thing. Neat little touch over here. Um, you know, they've, they've got the goods where it really matters. It sort of reminds me of the Coachman Apex in that they're simple where they should be and fancy where they could be. Like they got the protected hinges. You've got the nicer uh, slam latch doors. But remember at night, you don't have to slam them and make a lot of noise out there. They're magnet held back. And apparently they ship with the spare tire in the front compartment, although it has the bracket system. It obviously mounts to the bumper. They have a large, it's something like roughly 52 cubic foot or something like that of front storage capacity here. Now that brown box that you're looking at, that is actually the griddle that will go with the camp kitchen. So keep in mind when we get to the camp kitchen in a minute, you're not going to actually see a cooker situation on it visibly. It's here, it's just stored in the front compartment. You'll see why they have them uh, separate in just a minute here. Now that is one of those Miss Piggy anti-slam uh, karate chop doors where if the wind gusts on that thing, it's not going to slam against uh, the, the, uh, the side of the RV and, you know, scare anybody or wake somebody up. Of course, we have exterior awning lighting. We've got the uh, outside speakers. If I'm being picky, I would really like it if those were moved down lower on the RV. But that's just a, uh, that's a personal preference. I prefer to have, uh, have them more at like chest level or below so that I'm not just blowing away the neighbors here. Um, the, uh, the roof is fully walkable. It has a PVC roof membrane. One of the cool things about that, unfortunately I can't get you up there today, is that uh, the PVC membrane's uh, a little bit whiter, lighter, and brighter. It's a little bit more reflective. And it helps keep the, uh, uh, well, the membrane itself needs no specific maintenance. And it helps keep the RV uh, a little bit cooler. Now, the camp kitchen here is a little bit different from what you might have seen on this channel in the past. All right, so it's interesting because it's like, it's a small thing that like telescopes out and wings out and all this transformery kind of stuff flips out here. And pardon me, a little bit of water is dribbling on it. I'll get a towel and dry that out. So first of all, right here, wing out number one, it's just going to be countertop prep space, or you could just leave it slid shut, obviously. In the middle here is where you would put that griddle that we saw earlier. The griddle is actually going to be like basically always free floating. And there is naturally a gas grill cooker hooker right down below to power that sucker. Now it doesn't have a traditional plumbed sink, which would be my preference, but it does at least have a, uh, a water sprayer port. Comes with a little hose here. You could add a little garden hose attachment. And it is uh, like a, a, you know, dump out wash basin or like I, I kind of call it the dog dish style. It's simple, it's lightweight, it's inexpensive, but uh, you know, it's functional. And there's a lot of people who will go, can I get it without a camp kitchen? The camp kitchen is actually standard on these, but if you're looking, it's really just a couple pieces of metal that you can just unscrew and pop out of there and you could just have the storage if you wanted to. Now remember the spare tire uh, apparently ships up in the front pass-through compartment on these. And then when we go through and uh, we do our, you know, final inspection for you, we can get that mounted on the rear bumper. You're going to want to be a little bit cognizant of exactly where you mount that or have that mounted as it were. You don't want to block the brake lights. You don't want to block the cargo door. One of the things that that spare tire mount does have though, is it has like a flip down angle mount function. So if it is in the door, uh, in the way of the door, it can flip down and get out of the way without having to get out a wrench and dismantle the whole thing. And this is what I was talking about earlier. You know, if you've got uh, a reasonable size, not, not like a monster two-seater kayak, I don't think, you could probably get it uh, all the way through here, all the way up to that kitchen counter, and I don't see that being an issue. Now, that rear door does deadbolt, by the way, so that you do have, uh, you know, kiddo security, so that you don't got to worry about somebody reaching in and nabbing the kids or anything like that. Um, it does have a black tank flush system there just behind uh, the, uh, the tires. Um, and this RV does have a single sewer outlet just behind that. Um, you see where the power cord's hooked up. It's actually down below, just in front of there. 
Now she's slide awning ready, so that is something that we could add for you here. Fairly simple and easily, unfortunately. Well, you know what? I, tell you, I was gonna say, unfortunately, there's snow on the roof, but hey, you get to see that it is built with a snow load roof. So uh, this RV has a, uh, it's a five-sided laminated product. You've got um, Asdell under the fiberglass skin on the two side walls, but basically it's a welded aluminum cage, lightweight kind of trailer. Um, it's not necessarily terribly different construction from what you find in a lot of things out there. It's just simple, straightforward. It does the job well, and it does it without being the most expensive lightweight bunkhouse family camper. You know, if you're like, listen, I, I really like uh, some of those other things that I've seen on your channel, but I just, I don't, I don't need to go top, top dollar. That's where this can come through and still give you some nice looks, all the function. Like you still maintain that heated enclosed belly. Like there's a lot of really good things going on here. So let me know what you think, everybody. Let me know what you like about it, what you changed given the opportunity. Uh, again, if you're curious about pricing and availability, check that link in the video description. I will also leave you a couple links to say like a Rockwood or a Freedom Express that make a very, very similar floor plan. If uh, you're like, okay, I like what this is, but what else is out there? I'll let you do some cross comparing. You never even need to pick up the phone. And if you appreciate things like that, showing you, you know, where they soar, maybe where they fall short a little bit and giving you a fair look before you spend your money, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to our videos. We'll see you the next time around. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.